Hello and welcome to Euphoria. This channel explores designing, creating and building models for a LEGO city. We'll be exploring the joys and challenges of building official LEGO sets and designing and making modifications on my own creations. In this series of videos I'll be explaining how I develop the concept, design and build for a LEGO creation of my own design, a mock. I'm creating a building for my LEGO city. It will be an old astronomical clock that sits in the centre of the town and is a historical landmark and tourist attraction. In previous videos we looked at the development of the concept for this model and the structural design and detailed design for the mock. If you haven't seen them yet you might want to look at the previous videos in this series. There's a link in the card above and in the description below. In this video, which is part 6 of the series, we'll take the detailed design which we developed in part 5 and complete the design phase. So in this last phase of the design process I'm going to finalise the design for this mock. After this video we'll move on to the build. Look out for further videos coming up. In the previous video we developed the detailed design for this mock. It's a corner modular building representing an old historical building containing an astronomical clock. It has an entrance at the front and a fountain at the side. It's built over three storeys that will be separable in modular style and it has an interesting cross gable roof with attic rooms inside. We completed the detailed design of all three storeys of the building in the previous video, including the floor plans for each level and the use of spaces inside the building. I also touched on the likely cost of the mock. If you missed how the structural design and the detailed design for this mock were developed, it might be worth taking a look at the previous videos in this series. So in the detailed design we already decided the design of the walls, doors and roof that form the main structure of the building. Now we're just going to finalise a few details to finish off the design. There are still a few smaller things to decide as we finalise the design, such as furnishing the rooms, final decisions on colours and finishes, some detailed features, flooring and a few other finishing touches. We'll deal with quite a lot of smaller decisions in this phase and the result will be the final design. I call this the F phase of the design process and it's the last part of the design stage before we get to building the model. I'm developing this design in computer aided design using LEGO Digital Designer LDD but I'll be building it for real later. For this particular mock I'm fortunate that I already have some of the parts I require because I previously bought the Harry Potter Hogwarts clock tower set and the castle building from the Harry Potter Whomping Willow set. So I will be trying to make the most use of those parts to minimise the amount of additional bricks that I need to buy to complete the build of this mock. So now let's make a start on the final design for this mock. I'm going to finish off the outside of the building first. So far I've designed the building in a basic brick yellow or tan colour scheme. Some parts are other colours including some parts where I've used colour coding to help me with the design. Now I want to sort out the colour scheme. It will still be mostly tan so that I can make the most of the bricks I already have. At the bottom of the building are some bricks representing rocks that are dark grey and some in lighter grey. Those parts of the building that sit directly on the ground will be dark tan to make it look like the building is bedded into the ground. I'll make the lintels over the windows dark tan 
and I've used dark tan for some of the 1x4 bricks in the walls as well. I'm also going to change the floors and also the tile layer that is used to separate the floors so that they're the same tan colour as the walls. Unfortunately the curved tiles used to separate the floors of the tower aren't available in tan so I'm going to use light bluish grey instead. I want to give the building an old look without making it look too decrepit and I can do that by adding some texture and colour in a limited colour palette sympathetic with the main colour of the walls. So I'm going to use some bricks with a masonry profile. I already have 29 of these bricks from the Harry Potter sets in the so-called medium nugget colour. I'll use these along with a few in the same tan as the walls, which just give the impression of some exposed brickwork to break up any large areas of plain walls. I want to add a detail at this stage, which is the downpipes or drain pipes and drains. These are exterior features of the building that I want to add at this final stage of the design. I've put a downpipe for each corner of the building to take the rainwater from each segment of the roof. The two at the front flank the clock tower itself. They're made from a number of so-called bars, which are three, four and six bricks in length and clipped to the building using bricks with a clip that I've built into the walls of the building. The two at the back are in similar positions and built similarly. In the back corner by the rear entrance, the downpipe bends round the archway but otherwise reaches the ground as normal. The downpipes have to be made in sections that match the height of the stories so that the sections can still be separated and put back together. At the bottom of each downpipe I've put a drain for the water to run away. Now I'm going to look again at finishing the design of one of the main features of the building, which is the astronomical clock. I want to add some finishing touches of decoration around the clock, I was thinking of adding minifigures or animals around the clock, but I found that they distracted from the clock too much or obscured the clock face. So I decided just to put some decorative pieces around the clock. I used these unicorn horns in gold attached into corbel pieces with one or two gold elements to add some highlights. I also put two smaller figures below the clock. Again, if I used minifigures, they would be too big. So I used one micro figure and another figure made from small parts. I've added a small shield and a scepter. In the previous design stage, I wasn't sure about the sun indicator, which crosses the face of the astronomical clock and I've been looking for a way to improve that. So I've changed it to a bar with an attachment for a round tile that can slide up and down and the bar can swing across the face. I can look for a suitably decorated round tile and I already have one with a swirly pattern that would fit quite well. I also have the option to use a round piece with a clip 
that clips directly to the bar. And if I can find a suitable sticker for it, that also would be a great option. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the look and feel of the astronomical clock in its final design. To provide a bit of colour at the side of the building, I decided to put some foliage growing up the side of the wall. Again, it needs to separate where the floors separate. I may change these colours when I build it, or see if I can get some of those plates with three leaves to add on to here. They don't exist in the LDD parts palette, so I can't show them on this view. I also put a small amount of foliage at the front of the building, just to add a bit of colour. To finish off the front and back of the building, I'm just going to add a couple of items of street furniture. The rockwork and the bollards already extend into the pavement at the front, so there isn't space for too much extra here. I've added the standard lamp post in its normal position to the right of the base plate, and I've added an information sign to the left of the entrance. There's a huge range of signs and stickers available, but LDD is very limited, so I've just chosen a map to show on here for now. I also added a bit of texture to the pavement by making a simple checkered pattern outside the front door. And I've added a few jumper plates to the pavement so that there's some studs to provide places for minifigures. So to complete the outside of the building, I just need to finish off the roof and add the finials. I've added dark grey tiles and dark tan tiles to the ridges of the roof so that you don't see the studs. You also don't want to see the studs on the gable ends, so I've covered these with dark tan tiles which finish them off really neatly. And finally, I can add finials to the top of the roof. So that pretty much finishes the design for the exterior of the building. So now we turn to finishing off the interior of the building. I'm going to put some furniture, fixtures and fitting. I'll provide floor finishes, that usually means tiling for the ground floor, and I may provide some for the upper floors. But I need to be careful because adding lots of internal details, furnishings and finishing touches can increase the part count significantly and it's very easy to get carried away with the idea of using unusual or expensive parts. Some people find this stage exciting but it's very individual. So what I'm going to do for this mock is add the key. So in the entrance hall Obviously this is where visitors to the building arrive. I've just put here a bit of decoration on the floor. Uh, sort of grey stone slabs for the floor decoration. And then a reception desk with a receptionist. Not sure about which figure to use for this minifigure here but maybe somebody official looking with a cap as official receptionist for the visitor attraction and museum. At the back of the building, this is behind the fountain, which is on this side, we've got the area which is the original spring. So what I've done here is finish off the top of the back of the fountain here, put in a little kind of smaller fountain, like a drinking fountain that the spring water comes out of. And then I've provided some cups uh, for people to sample the water and some bottles if they want to actually 
get their own water from the spring and buy a bottle of water. Just a little cupboard here. Maybe put something inside there. And then I've tiled the floor. There's a drain in case any of spillages. And a few bits of the rocks that the building was kind of built on top of. So that finishes the back area of the building. To the left of the building, there's going to be a shop area. I've managed to find a sign that says shop, so that's going to go on the wall here. And then I've tiled the floor of the shop. And the rest of the area consists of shelves with interesting items to buy. There might be bottles of water to buy, presents, maybe souvenirs. There's an area in here with one or two items on a table and a pattern on the floor. The rest of the floor is also grey flagstones. And then just behind the door here, I've put a little till area with a couple of studs for people to stand. Here we can maybe have somebody running the till if the shop is busy. And a couple of kind of special featured area for special presents. So that's the shop area on the left of the building. And the last thing to finish off on the ground floor is the entrance area at the back over here. It's a bit difficult to see this area because of the stairs, but basically I've put tiling for flagstones on the floor. I've just put a broom on the wall attached to a clip, so I've adjusted this part of the wall slightly. And then there's a bucket underneath the stairs. And just next to the door, I've put a key hanging on another clip. So really, this part of the building is just the back entrance area. Nothing that special for it, really. And you can see that that's what it looks like on the way in. Turning now to the first floor, obviously at the top of the stairs there's very limited room to put anything in this area, but I have decorated the timekeeper's office at the back. So here what I've done is put in a desk with a chair. That's really from one of the uh, Harry Potter sets, I think, this desk. I've built a bookcase with some reference books on it against the back wall where there's no windows. And then I've put an internal clock, which is a grandfather clock, so that the timekeeper can keep track of the time, go out and service the clocks when he needs to. So the other main feature for the interior is the mechanism for the astronomical clock. So here we've got some of the mechanism for the clock, a few gears. Now obviously that's not going to drive this clock mechanism. So if anybody was expecting this to be a working astronomical clock, I'm sorry to disappoint them, but you can still adjust the clock from the outside just by turning the various parts of the clock face itself. But here I've just put a kind of representative mechanism and because this is going to be as part of the visitor centre, I've put it in a protective cage so that nobody can come and interfere with the clock. And there's a door on the cage here that 
would allow the timekeeper to get inside and wind up or adjust the clock as needed. There's a couple of dials on here as well just to show how the clock is performing and whether it's running ahead or behind and the tension in the mechanism and so on. So the last area on the first floor is the exhibition space. This is going to be an exposition all about clocks and timekeeping. So I've got here room for a few display cases. One or two examples of clocks that I can put on the wall. And then a few banners and explanation pieces that I can put on the walls. What I'm going to do is look for some stickers to put on these display boards to make it something to do with clocks and timekeeping. I've managed to get a few display boards into the tower area and on this side because of the angles I've managed to get some these are called flags, but again they can hold stickers that can hold display pieces. I've had to modify these so that they've got these clips on them which slightly affects the appearance from the outside, but I think it looks okay. So that's really the first floor finished. And now I'll move on to the second floor. On the top floor, there isn't very much that's visible from the outside because it's all built into the attic inside the roof. However, I would like to include a mechanism for the top astronomical clock, at least in outline. So what I'm going to do is just to show what the inside might look like, I'll kind of make this back half not visible so that we can see inside the top floor of the building. And what I've done here is built a kind of mechanism for the top floor of the clock. Again, it's not really a working clock, so don't expect the clock to work. But what I am going to do is I've decided to include a kind of pulley and weight system which will power the clock. So I've got a pulley here and for the weight I'm going to make that go through a hole in the floor. So I've actually adjusted the floor structure here to give me a round hole. And what I want to do is include this weight which will wrap around the pulley hang down through the floor and appear in this upper floor of the building here. So I might include this round tile with a hole in just to indicate the space where the weight might descend into. So let's make that sort of grey. That means I'll leave this space spare or empty in the first floor. And I'll change these to be tan colour. And that will give me a mechanism on the top floor that could be sort of powered by this weight that's going to be hanging down inside the clock tower. So actually I've decided to put a kind of safety barrier around this hole in the floor so that minifigs don't fall down. And then on the lower floor, I decided to make that area where the weight might descend into, into a round circle of plates in yellow. And I'll try and find some kind of warning sign to put on a circular tile in the middle where the weight descends. Now I'm going to add a few minifigures to this model just to give it some life. 
I'm going to use some of the minifigures from the Harry Potter clock tower set. The minifigs of the pupils are small minifigs that I can use as school children who are visiting the clock tower. And I'll make the figure of Dumbledore into a kind of costumed character who can be the tour guide for the upper parts of the museum and exhibition space. I'll need to find a minifigure for the receptionist and I may need to find one to be the cashier in the shop as well. Outside I can put a couple of minifigs who are visitors, maybe one who can be a tourist with a camera. The minifigs will depend to some extent on what I can obtain to suit this mock and of course the minifigs can be changed easily at any time. So that finishes the design for this mock. I keep revisiting the question of cost, but it's important if we're going to build this mock for real. Earlier in this video I completed the design for the exterior of the building, including all the exterior details and finishing touches. And at that point, the piece count for this model was about 1,750 pieces. After adding all the interior details, fixtures and fittings and furniture, the piece count has grown to 2,200 pieces. That's a massive increase of 450 pieces, or 25%, just for the interior. And that's not including the minifigs. So I can understand why some people aren't that interested in completing the interiors of their buildings, especially in areas where they can't be seen, as it adds a lot to the cost. However, it does complete the building and it adds to the satisfaction of making a working building. And I'm still well within my park budget of 2,500 pieces. The actual cost of the pieces will depend on how I do the procurement of the parts and which exact ones that I use, which I'll look at in the next video. So now we've completed the design for this mock. I'm really pleased with the final design for this building. Looking back at the original concept for this model, I think we've achieved what was envisaged in the original idea. It's a building with a historical feel and containing an old astronomical clock, it's on a 32 by 32 base plate at ground level. It's in the format of a tower that's three or four storeys high with separable floors, like for modular buildings. It's facing the front onto the town square, incorporating a passageway around the building. It's a full building with all its walls and with the main viewpoint from the front or left hand side. It's to minifig scale and it fits all the modular standards. It uses the colour palette and parts similar to the Harry Potter Hogwarts sets so that I can use the parts from those sets. It includes a fountain on the outside and on the inside of the building. So we've completed the structural design by developing the basic shape of the mock. We've worked out its size, the separate sections that will be constructed and the floor plans for each level. We've also considered how the design provides support for the floors and the roof, whether it has enough strength and how it will conform to the modular building standards. Then we completed the detailed design which looked at how to build the roof, how to fit in stairs between the levels, details of the doors and windows, details of the fountain feature, how to make the astronomical clock feature, the exact construction details and colours to be used, and the internal spaces and uses of the rooms. In this video we've completed the final stage of the design, which has provided for furnishing the rooms, final decisions on colours and finishes, some detailed features, flooring, fixtures and fittings, minifigures and a few other finishing touches. Now that we've finished the design, we can finally move on to the build for this mock. 
Although I've already got quite a few of the parts for the build, I'll have to get quite a few more if I'm going to be able to construct this model according to the design. So look out for the next video in this series, in which I will start the build for this mock by looking at how to procure the parts that I need. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos about LEGO modular buildings.